Hey, how's it going? This is Luke Stokes with EOS DAC, and I've given a bunch of presentations lately about the DAC technology stack, and everyone I show this stuff to is just super, super excited, and they're like, oh my gosh, when can I get this? I need this tomorrow. Like, you know, when, when can I get my own DAC? So I'd, I'd like to kind of give an overview of what we've been building, and I'll hopefully kind of give you a better understanding of what a DAC actually is by seeing some of the tools we've built to help DACs uh, work together and come together. So first off, I'm gonna show this here, which is the, the member client. So the EOS DAC member client is kind of the front end interface for any DAC. And again, you could, you could have your own DAC completely. This is just giving the EOS DAC as an example, because as a community owned block producer, we're using our own DAC technology in order to kind of uh, test it out and refine it and build it and improve it. So if this was your own DAC, you'd obviously have your own logo, your own color scheme, you'd have your own homepage, all of that would be completely customizable based on what you want to accomplish with your decentralized autonomous community. And a DAC is basically just a group of people that have a shared goal. That's pretty much all it is. They, they want to accomplish something together, so they have to figure out a way to manage the resources that they pull together and get work done and make sure everything's transparent and uh, things are moving forward. So the first part of it would be when a member comes to your DAC, they would have a constitution that you would write or a user agreement, however you want to phrase it. it basically just sets a, a standard for what everyone in that group agrees to and how they're going to work together. This is the EOS DAC constitution, and it kind of explains the custodian board and the different uh, things, that, the responsibilities that the members and the board has. And as you can see here, when a member comes in, they have to have your local token. In this case, it's an EOS DAC token, but it, you, it could be your token. And when they go and they sign the constitution, that the version that they signed is hashed and put on chain. So that way, every member of your DAC actually has a shared agreement with how we're going to work together and treat each other. That's pretty important. From there, they can go ahead and set up a profile. So as you can see here, this is my profile. I've got links to my social media accounts and a description of what I am all about. And then for those who want to be actually part of the leadership of the DAC, they can register to become a custodian candidate. So you can see here I've registered and I submitted you know, what I'd like my pay to be per week. And the way it works within our DAC, and this is all configurable, is that each custodian candidate kind of submits, hey, I want to get paid this amount of money. Uh, and the new period that runs every seven days kind of figures out, I, I, right now it's the median, but eventually it'd be the mean, the average of what all the different candidates have submitted. And then that's what the, the pay is for the custodians. So the custodians have uh, a skin in the game as well because they have to lock up tokens in order to become a candidate. And those tokens, again, this is all configurable, but in our system take about 90 days to get back after they're no longer a custodian. So they have some skin in the game to ensure they do something that's valuable for the community. And they also have a financial incentive to remain custodians because they get, they get paid. So once the uh, candidates are created, then the community, the token holders, the members who have registered with the DAC can actually go in and vote for different custodian candidates. So you can see here, for example, these are all the different people within EOS DAC that have submitted their profile. And every seven days, so you don't have to, as a member, you don't have to vote every seven days. Whenever you vote, your votes are set. But every seven days, the votes are tallied. And the new top 12, in our case, we have 12 custodians. And again, that's configurable. You can have less, you can have five, seven, whatever you want. But in our case, the top 12 get voted in based on that stake weight, those, uh, the weight of your vote based on the number of tokens you have. So in this case, for example, just today, Myra was introduced into the custodian board because she got enough votes and new period just ran uh, just a little while ago actually. So what this means is that she now is a member of the custodian board. So the custodian board is what actually gives the DAC any value and power. So before I go any further explaining the rest of how this all works, I want to go a little deeper and show the actual permissions account behind the DAC itself. And if you ran your own DAC, you'd have your own permissions account in a similar way. So the DAC authority account, as you can see here, has these really impressive permissions that are configured. So those 12 I just showed you are actually represented right here. And that's whenever the new period runs, it actually automatically updates those permissions on this account based on the top, based on the votes of the, the members. And so if anything is done with the active permission of this account of DAC authority, then it has to use DAC authority high. 
to act authority high requires a threshold of 10 in order to pass. And so we have 12, so what this means is you need a multi-signature of 10 of 12 in order to accomplish the permissions of high on this account. We also have medium and low, and these kind of correspond to different, um, like in a traditional board, you have like a special resolution of the board or a resolution of the board. These different permission levels you would configure and set up yourself. So you might like, for example, if you only had you know seven people in your deck, maybe high permission would be six or five, and then you could have medium and low, something lower than that, depending on what you wanted to accomplish. So for example, why this is important, if you look at our token contract, we've got uh, you know a bunch of tokens here that if anyone was able to come in and modify this contract, they could print new tokens or they could change how the transfers work and that would be really bad. So it's really important that this actual contract is protected so people can believe that this token has value. So this we do by not having a single private key that one person manages, but we actually set it with DAC authority active. And this way, if you're going to modify this contract, you actually have to go back to having that 10 of 12 before you could do it. That way people know that this contract is secure, it's uh, kept in place by people who have skin in the game and they've been voted in by the members who are uh, you know own this token and care about this token. We can also do some really cool things with the EOS IO permissions. And in this case, this is the EOS DAC, the DAC account, which holds most of the EOS funds. There's about $44,000 in here owned by the community. And the permissions on this account, again, are set as DAC authority active for owner and active. But we also have this expert tr trans uh, permission. This transfer permission allows uh, either a medium DAC authority, which would be nine of 12, which gives it the, the plus two to get to the two threshold, or it allows the code to transfer money. Now, if you remember, the Ethereum DAO hack was a big deal where millions of dollars were lost because the code had a bug and somebody was able to exploit that bug to transfer the funds out of the DAC or the DAO. In this case, that's not really possible because you only get a plus one when the code itself tries to transfer funds and you need a threshold of two in order to get to it. So in order to get to that, you need a 60 minute delay. And that means you have to set up a deferred transaction into the future before you can actually transfer that token. So this combination ensures that the code is never gonna do something that the actual you know, people want. If they see that deferred transaction out there trying to drain the money of the DAC, they can actually go and cancel that deferred transaction without too much trouble. So now that you have a better understanding of how the back end works as far as the permissions and what these actual custodian candidates and these custodians that are elected, what permissions they have on the back end, it hopefully makes a little better sense of what we're building here. So the interface for managing multi-signature transactions, you can see here. So for example, this is one I just voted on today, and it goes through and it talks about the referendum and whether or not the EOS DAC community wants to vote yes on this particular referendum. And in this case, it needs a, a, a seven of nine, it needs a, a low permission. Right here, seven would be seven of low. And you can actually see this again if I go to the actual EOS DAC block production account, you see that we've added a permission here that says, hey, if you want to do voice, basically the voice of the DAC, you need DAC authority low. So essentially, if DAC authority low approves it, then you can run a command as voice. And in this particular case, the command we would be running would be um, actually setting this, in, uh, basically voting yes on this particular referendum. And so you can see here who, which custodians have voted for it, which custodians haven't voted yet. And if it times out, if it just expires, then it, it won't, won't pass. So sometimes things just expire and they don't pass. Uh, if it does get executed, then you'll see it here in the list of executed proposals. For example, uh, we've got payments to you know, translations and things like that. And you can see who approved it. You can see the details of it, you know, these things when you take a look at them. And this is what enables the individual members of the DAC to kind of select custodians who they trust, who will then make decisions for the DAC as far as how the funds of the DAC and which activities of the DAC are completed. Now in this example, it, this is in production and all this code is available in open source. If anyone can use this right now. We don't yet have the worker proposal system completely done. So what I'm gonna switch over to now is the actual development environment. This is on the Jungle Test Network. We can get a feel for how the worker proposal system would work. So as a member, if I was to go in here under member tools, I could create a new worker proposal and I could you know, specify which category I'm gonna be working under. I could specify how much money I want. 
And then importantly, I specify an arbitrator. So when this money, when this proposal gets approved by the custodian board, then that arbitrator is involved in if there's a dispute in the future, if the person is trying to, you know, get the money, claim that they did the work, but they didn't actually do the work and scam the DAC, well, this arbitrator can come in and say, yeah, you know what, you should refund the DAC, they didn't do the work. Or vice versa, let's say a whole new custodian board gets elected in, and for whatever reason, they don't like this worker, and they decide they don't want to pay them, even though they did the work, again, the arbitrator can come in and say, hey, yeah, they did the work, we, we need to pay them. So this uh, worker proposal here gets submitted, and then the custodians will come in here and they'll have a worker proposal system where they can view pending uh, worker proposals that need to be approved. They can see which ones are a work in progress. And eventually after the work is done, there'll be another step in the workflow where they can uh, approve a pending claim. So if somebody says, hey, here's the work I did, I've now completed it, here's the evidence that I said I would provide to show that I've completed it, and the workers, the uh, DAC custodians can say, yep, yeah, we approve that, go ahead and sign off on it, and it's taken care of. And there's also, of course, uh, financial tools in here where you'd be able to see kind of the money flow of your DAC and how things are going. Uh, the different payments are here for the custodians that can come in and claim payments. So for example, actually, I think I might have one today. Yeah, here's one for today. So I have, uh, even though I requested 10 EOS, we're still doing the median, so it's a little bit higher than that because some of the other custodians have asked for more as their payment. But I can go in here and uh, this all works with Scatter, integrates with Scatter, and I can go ahead and claim my payment here. And so that's basically the user interface, the, the experience that the users will have when they come in and interact with the DAC. It'll be through the Scatter desktop. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about where we're going and what, we're, what we've been doing. There's a lot of really incredible excitement based around these technologies and how, you know, instead of building your own startup, instead of building, you know, just this idea all by yourself, instead you can build a community. And with these tools, you can actually have that community come together and start to work together and figure out their governance of how they're going to decide what are they going to work on next, how they're going to decide who gets a token, who doesn't. You know, all that stuff can be figured out with these tools and it's all transparent and it's all on chain. Even if you already have like a, tra a traditional company with a traditional board of directors making decisions, you can actually kind of replicate that process using this technology on chain. So it's completely visible and completely transparent. And the beauty about it as well, if you don't even have value in your project yet, you can create your own token that doesn't have any value other than being a governance token. And you can use that token to kind of elect the different people and decide who's a member, all that kind of stuff, almost like an invite. And then from there, eventually, you can start rewarding people with that token. And down the road, when people start saying, well, hey, there's a whole bunch of value here, I'd maybe like to invest in it or something along those lines, whoever was given the token throughout that entire process essentially has claim to what's been created based on the amount of tokens they have. So there's a lot of really cool opportunities here that are just completely different than most systems where generally the employees and the owners and the customers are all in conflict with each other. But instead, as, as they all become token holders, they can all benefit from the product service that's offered as customers. They can all work as employees through the worker proposal system to improve what's being built. And then as token holders, they're also kind of owners in a sense that they have a say in how things are done, either by registering as custodian candidates or um, by electing candidates that they trust. So some really cool stuff going on with EOS DAC. I hope you enjoyed that overview. I hope that gives you a little better understanding of what a DAC actually is and how it can be used. Uh, I, I've been in a bunch of really fun meetings with a lot of different people demonstrating this, and, and many of them are just really excited about getting started as soon as possible. So we're working on this code. As you can see, there's a lot of work still left to be done, and uh, we're excited about it. We're going to get it out there as soon as we can, and we're going to continue to make it easier and easier for anybody to spin up their own DAC with the DAC factory. So thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate any votes for our block producer because that really helps us fund all this development. And of course, we'd love for you to join our community as well. So come over to eosdac.io and uh, say hello. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. Take care.